Hi everyone, welcome to Carol and Zaki. Today's tutorial is the squashed frog door stopper. Thanks too to those of you who asked me to make it and thank you for your patience. This is the original door stopper. I made it about six years ago as a joke for my son. He's looking a little worse for wear but he still works and we still like him. I made a second one that some of you have seen online on Pinterest and Facebook. You may have noticed that it had an unfinished join across the center. The reason why is that I was sending it to my friend in Japan and I wanted it to be as light as possible. I used a round plastic container when designing the frog and asked her to fill it with sand and then sew it shut. I used a weight training ball to fill the original frog. It's about one kilo and slightly soft. It's filled with metal dust or something like that. I made a new sample for this tutorial. I went to my local recycle shop to see what I could find to use for the body. I wanted another one of these weight balls, but I couldn't find one anywhere. So I bought a lawn bowls ball. It's slightly bigger than I was planning, but it's 1.6 kilograms, so it's going to make a great door stopper. It's slightly flatter on the top and bottom, which works out well for a door stopper. You could also use a bocce ball like this one that I found at the recycle store. It's quite heavy. You could use something like this to make a cute smaller door stopper. I've seen some door stoppers recently that look like they've been filled with stuffing. It makes a soft frog belly but it wouldn't be very effective at stopping a door from slamming shut. So I recommend you use something much heavier. I've made some changes to the design such as the neck. The neck on this frog got quite stretched so I've made a stronger neck. And it's difficult to make the, these toe pads look really cool, so I've changed the toe pad design. These ones look really fun. The pink frog is essentially the same as the frog we're going to make today. I used 4-ply yarn using a 3.5mm hook. It took a long time to make because the yarn is so fine. Today, I'm going to use two balls, one of variegated yellow and green, and one of dark green cotton, using a 5mm hook. In order to protect our hands, I make things with as little hand sewing as possible. First we'll make the toe pads, then the legs. You'll need 16 toe pads, and then the front and back legs. Then we'll make the tongue, the eyes, and the mouth. Then it's just a matter of crocheting the whole body in two pieces. We'll crochet the body, and then the head and neck. Then sew it on as I've done here. The eyes go on last. We'll crochet in the tongue and mouth, the toe pads and the legs. That way we'll minimise as much hand sewing as possible. The first thing we're going to do is make the legs. We need to make four toe pads for each leg, 16 in total. Then we'll make the legs and attach each toe pad. We start with a magic ring. Wrap the yarn around your fingers, put your hook through the ring you've made, hook on a piece of yarn, then do a slip stitch. Pull it tight to anchor it. Next we're going to do seven single crochet stitches into our ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> I sped it up. When you've finished your seven single crochet stitches, pull your yarn through a little longer. Then we're going to pull the shorter yarn piece tight to close the magic ring. The reason why it's called a magic ring is because as you pull it tighter, you can completely close the gap in the center. So just pull tight until all of the gap is gone. Then we'll snip off the thread and we'll sew in the last loop. Pull the thread out from the ball side. You can see there's a gap that we're going to need to close there. So put your thread onto a needle and then we're going to sew into the first single crochet. Put the needle through the front and back loops of that first single crochet. And then we're going to thread into the back of the last stitch. There's also a little loop just below it that I usually put the needle through as well. Can you see it there? Then we'll pull that through and we're going to just tie it off with a regular knot. Tie it once and then tie it again.
And when we crochet those toe pads onto the legs, we're going to hide those yarn tails in as we crochet. To make the legs, we're going to use the easy cast on method. Make a slip knot, then a two or three chain. My double crochet is the same length as my two chain, so I'm going to do a two chain. Put your yarn over your hook, then put your hook through the first chain loop. Make sure you have two threads above and one thread below. Pull some yarn through the first loop and making sure that the loop is not too tight, pull some yarn through only the first loop. Then pull through two loops and two loops the same as you normally would for a double crochet. We'll just repeat these steps for the rest of the leg. Yarn over your hook, then go through the front and back of that bottom stitch you just made. Again, pull some yarn through only the first loop. Make sure you keep the left side relatively loose. If you do pull this tight, your work is going to start to curve. So unless you want that, make sure to keep this side loose. We need 16 easy cast on stitches for the front legs and 18 for the back legs. Then we'll attach the toes. When we reach the end of the easy cast on stitch, we'll do four chain and then attach the toes. We're going to trap the yarn tails as we crochet on the toes. So we'll start at the bottom of the toe away from the knot. And as we crochet into each space, we're going to trap that yarn tail. So do a single crochet and remember to trap that tail. Then we'll do a chain, a single crochet into the next stitch again, trapping that tail. and a chain. And again, the same thing into the next stitch, one single crochet, making sure to trap that tail and a chain. Now we're up to the next tail. So another single crochet and again, trap that tail, a chain, a single crochet in the next stitch, trapping the tail. <laughs> You're going to get sick of me saying that. A chain, a single crochet, trapping the tail. A chain. Now with the last one, I cross them over and do a single crochet, trapping both tails, crossing them over there. And then I do a single crochet, one each into the four chains that we did to go up to the toe. When you get to the bottom of that toe, you do a single crochet into the first stitch you made there, and then you do a four chain. We'll keep repeating this process with each of the four toes, working our way across that top double crochet stitch um, a little at a time, and in the end, we should end up on the outer part of the bottom side of the easy cast on stitch. When you get there, make sure you go into the front and back of that last double crochet you did in the easy cast on stitch. Having trouble here. Do a slip stitch there. And we'll snip off some yarn to be able to sew it in. Pull the yarn through. We're going to use this yarn tail thread to sew up into the hand and down into that last double crochet to both hide the yarn tail and close the little gap. You can see how I've done that on my finished frog. That hole has now disappeared. Since we've already crocheted in the yarn tails, all we need to do next is snip off those tails and we'll have a nice neat little hand. When I make things I use whatever yarn I have on hand and currently I have a 4 ply red yarn. I'm using a 3.5mm hook and I'm going to make the tongue using the easy cast on method we just used for the legs. Again we'll make double crochet stitches. So I do 2 chain then yarn over the hook, 
go into the first loop of the chain, pull through a piece of yarn, then pull through only that first loop, then pull through two and pull through two as you normally would do for a double crochet, yarn over the hook, go into the front and back of that bottom loop, pull through one piece of yarn to make a loop, make sure that that's loose, pull through one, then pull through two and two again. It's the same as the legs that we've just made. If you're using a chunkier yarn, you'll need fewer stitches, and if you're using a fine yarn, you may need more stitches. Make it as long as you like. The tongue length ended up being roughly 20 centimeters or 8 inches long. Now we're going to make the eyes. I'm going to show you two different sizes. I'm using a 5 ply white and a 4 millimeter hook. So, first of all, we're going to make a magic ring. But this time we're not going to close the ring as tight as we did last time. To make the ring, wrap the yarn around your fingers, pull a piece of yarn through. Now we're going to slip stitch that to make the anchor stitch. And then we're going to cast on seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you pull the ring closed, but leave a little space. That's the space you're going to need to put the little um, safety eye pin through. If you don't want to use safety pin eyes, if you've got little um, children in your home and this could be a choking hazard, then just crochet a very small uh, magic circle and sew it to the top of your eye. So I secure just into one loop that tail. Um, we'll be using it to pull tight later. So put your hook through and put the tail across it and do two single crochets into the first hole and then let your tail go out because you're going to need that close to the entrance to, to pull it tight when you're putting the eye in. So then we just do one increase every second stitch. So this has a single double crochet. Then you have two in one loop then you repeat that to the end of the row. Now, if you put an increase in an increase, you'll start to get straight edges. So we're going to do one single crochet each in the next two stitches, and then we're going to do an increase in the stitch immediately after the increase from the last row. So it'll be one in each of the next two stitches and then two in the stitch after that for the increase and we'll repeat that till the end of the row. So that's the top part of the eye and now we need it to curve and the way to do that is just to not increase. So for the next two rows we'll do a single crochet in each stitch. That looks to be our last single crochet now. The way you can tell is you can see where the stitches move up from the first to second row. I want to end roughly there with a slip stitch. You can tell if you've gone too far when you're this close to the start because the stitches will make a little bump up. You don't have to worry too much because all of this is going to be sewn in when you sew the eyes to the head anyway. Give yourself a nice long tail to work with when you sew it onto the head and just pull the yarn through. Pull it tight, you don't need to do any special endings here. I buy my safety eyes from eBay, but you can find them in craft shops too. Mine have a soft fastener, but sometimes you get hard ones that my fingers can't manage to push closed. So I use this TV wall mount to push on the fastener if it's too tight. It fits perfectly. Use whatever you can for extra help if you have one like that. So what you do is you put your eye into the space. I usually turn it inside out when it's this small. And then you grab the tail of the magic ring and pull it very tight. Not so tight you snap your yarn, but pull it very tight. And then try and put your fastener on the back. If you need help, use your wall mount or whatever you've found to help you push it on. But this one today is pushing on okay. This is the second option for eyes. We're using the same 5 ply yarn and 4mm hook, but this time the eyes are going to be larger. First you make a magic ring and make an anchor point, pulling it tight, but instead of using 7 
single crochet stitches, we're going to do nine. This is the option I ended up choosing for my frog. The bigger eyes just looked so cool. So we're doing single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I wish I could crochet this fast. Now we're going to pull in the tail at the end, but remember not to pull it in too tight because we need space for the safety eye. I'm using a bigger safety eye for this one, but the peg size is still the same. We wouldn't be able to crochet around if we put the safety eyes in now because they would obstruct our access to the stitches. For row two, we're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch, but we're also going to anchor that tail in the first stitch. So one single crochet anchoring the tail, then put the tail aside. You're going to need that later to pull the magic ring closed. So we'll do a single crochet in the next stitch, then we'll do an increase in the next stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch. So keep going like that to the end of the row. For the third row we're going to increase every third stitch, but we're going to be careful not to increase on top of the increase from the previous row. So in this case it'll be a single crochet in one stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch, and two single crochets in the third stitch because that's the stitch immediately after the last increase. So continue that to the end of the row. A single crochet, then a single crochet, and then two single crochets to increase. That's the end of the third row. For the fourth, fifth, and sixth rows, we want it to curve, so we're going to do it a single crochet in each stitch for three rows. But first I'm going to attach my safety eyes because it's sometimes easier to do it now. So put the eye through the hole and pull the tail from the magic ring tight. Don't pull too tight and break your thread. Then put the fastener at the back of the safety eye and push it on tight. The fastener is going to secure that magic ring tail, so you don't need to worry about doing anything with that. To finish off this eye, you just need to do three rows of single crochet to curve the edge of the eye. Now that we have all our pieces besides the mouth, we're going to make the black mouth part. And as I said before, I don't like to sew things in, so I'm going to crochet the tongue into the mouth as we make it. Start with a magic ring, secure it with a slip stitch and then crochet seven single crochets. Now pull the magic ring closed using that short tail from the start. You don't have to worry about it too much this time because that's going to be um, not visible at the end. So join to your first stitch. I've made mine a little bit too tight the sensible thing to do here would probably be to undo it and redo it, but I'm going to show you what I do when it gets too tight for me and I can't manage with the hook that I'm using. I get a smaller hook and poke it through the hole that's a bit too tight, hook on a bit of yarn and then continue with the stitch. Unfortunately in this case we need an increase on the first stitch, so I'm going to use that smaller hook to help me again. So increase on that first stitch in the second row and then we'll do a single crochet in the next stitch. So just do two of those, so only half of row two and then we're going to attach the mouth part on the other side of the row two. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that mouth part and crochet into the top of one of those double crochets. To secure it firmly, make sure you go into both the front and the back of that top stitch. I'm up to my increase stitch in the black, so I'll put this through the next space and crochet a single crochet here. Then I put my hook through the middle of those double crochets in the tongue and I'll put it into the same hole that I just put the first one in because it's my increase stitch. 
then I'll go through the bottom of that um, easy increase stitch going through the, both the front and the back and then into the next space in the black mouth part and be careful to make sure you trap your tail in behind there so that you don't have to worry about it later. Now finish off to the end of the row. For round three, we're going to increase every third stitch. Make sure you don't do your increase in an increase from the row before. Sometimes it's hard to see where your row starts and it's particularly hard on black. So I usually use a piece of yarn to help me find where the end of the row is. In this case, we have that red from the tongue right there. So now that we're here at the end of the row, I'm going to tuck that red yarn in between the stitches from the last row and the next row so that I'll be able to see where the row begins. Um, when we're finished, we'll easily be able to just pull that out from the back. So it's not going to be a problem. Some people use stitch markers, little plastic things to show them, but I like this because it can give me a line to show me where I'm up to. If we continued our pattern of increasing every second stitch in one round, every third stitch in the next round, every fourth stitch in the next round, we'd start getting a curved shape, and for the mouth we need to keep it flat. So we're going to increase every second stitch. So make sure that your increase doesn't happen in the top of an increase from the row before. Now we're up to row five. In row five, we're going to increase every third stitch. So do a single crochet in one stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch, and then an increase in the following stitch. Make sure you don't do it in the top of a previous row's increase. For row six, we're going to increase every fourth stitch. So single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then increase. Now, if you find that your work is becoming a bit floppy, that means there have been too many increases for your tension level. Everyone crochets at a different tension. So if it becomes floppy, increase less. If it becomes tight and starts to curl, increase more. For the seventh row, we'll increase every fifth stitch. So We'll try and keep the previous um, increase halfway through that. So on the third stitch, I'll hit that increase. One, two, three, fourth stitch. And then the fifth stitch, which I'm increasing in, will be between the previous rows increase. That way you can see that it's staying nice and round instead of getting a square shape if you're going into the increase from the previous row. So a single crochet in each stitch and increase on the fifth stitch. For row eight, we'll do one increase every sixth stitch. For the ninth row, we'll just do a single crochet in each space and don't increase. Just a single crochet in each space. Now here is the start. This goes across to about there. There I am at the end. So at the end, what I do is one slip stitch and then I'll pull out a yarn tail. So those nine rows make our mouth part. You can see it fits nice and neatly into our head, which you haven't made yet, but I have. And we're going to fold that in half. I do pull it slightly higher at the top. And the easiest way to do that is we crocheted the tongue into the second row. So if you fold that over evenly with the top of the tongue, that should give you a slightly higher side on the top. Next, we're going to slip stitch through both layers of this folded mouth. That's going to give us a definite um, fold line in the center of the mouth, as you can see on the frog that we've already made as a sample. That is important because if you don't put that there, when you stuff your frog, that mouth is going to pop out and look pretty terrible. So we'll just slip stitch straight across that folded line through both layers of the mouth part, being careful to make sure you try and keep it as straight as possible. When you get close to the center, you're going to need to try and trap that tongue with at least two stitches. When I made my original doorstopper for my son, I didn't ever imagine that he would pick it up by its tongue, but children do things like this so it would be a good idea to trap that tongue in very securely so that it doesn't pull out in future. 
You can see that we've achieved a nice definite fold there and I've tied all of my ends. I'll crochet them in as I crochet the mouth into the head. Next we're going to make the body and we're going to attach the legs as we crochet the body. We'll make two parts, the body first and then we'll make the head down through the neck and this will be the only part that we'll need to attach besides the eyes. I have a system that I use when I'm making things that I know are going to be very heavy or have heavy use. Before I make the magic ring, I'm going to tie a knot in the end of my yarn. I'm going to leave a little loop so that I can use that to secure the tail so that it can't work its way out. Magic rings are not supposed to ever come undone, but I have found with very heavy use by small children it can happen. So make a knot in the bottom of your yarn, snip off that little tail, and then we'll start our magic ring. The first row is a magic ring, so wrap the yarn around your fingers, pull on a piece of yarn, and make a slip stitch anchor stitch. This isn't counted as part of your stitches. So we're going to use seven single crochet stitches. When you've done your seven stitches, pull that tail tight to close up the gap in the bottom of the magic ring, then go in the front and back of the first stitch. Pull on a piece of yarn, but make sure you're trapping that tail in. Now do a single crochet stitch, and you're going to do an increase in that stitch, so do another one in that stitch and then do a single crochet in the next stitch. We're going to increase every second stitch. I'm going to show you how to anchor that so it won't come undone. So here this stitch has an increase, so two single crochets in that stitch, and then a single crochet in the next stitch. I'm not going to anchor that tail in the next two stitches. You can see that there's a knot there and I don't want to create a bump in my work because of that knot so I'll keep it on the other side of what I'm making now. This stitch has an increase so we'll do two single crochets in this stitch. Then we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and we're going to open that tail loop that we've made and crochet one side in there. That way if it ever starts to pull undone it can't get very far because we've trapped it there with that little knot loop that we've made. The next stitch is an increase so we'll do two single crochets in that stitch continuing to trap that um, knot loop that we've made and the following stitch is a single crochet no increase. Now we're up to the third row and we're going to increase every third stitch. That first stitch that you can see is the increase from the previous row and we don't want to increase in the top of an increase so I'll do a single crochet in that stitch and I think there's enough space to um, hook on that tail one more time. So we'll hook in that tail. Don't hook it in if you're having to pull and stretch to get it on there. So you can see there that it's crocheted in nice and securely, that's not going to come undone. If you look carefully at your ball, you can see that the curvature doesn't start immediately. It's quite flat on whatever side you're looking at. And we don't want our shape to curve too quickly. So the curvature starts later on in the ball. So initially it's quite flat. So the next row, row four, we're going to increase every second stitch, just like we did with the mouth. I'm going to put a marker in here so that I can see where the start of my rows begin. So I have just a scrap of yarn and I'm going to put that there where you can see the initial rows started. So I'm up to the fifth row now and I'll just trap that in there so that I can see where I'm up to. In the fifth row, we're not going to do any increases, so it's just a single crochet in each space. On the sixth row, we're going to increase every second stitch. You don't need to worry about the previous row because they were all single crochet. The seventh row, we're going to do no increases, so it's just a single crochet in each space. 
So we just finished the seventh row, we're on to the eighth row, and I have a knot in my yarn. What I do when I have a knot in my yarn is I make another knot a little bit distance away from it and I anchor this in as I'm crocheting. I'll show you what I mean by that now. So we're doing an increase every third stitch. So one, two, and now my knot's coming three. I need to do an increase on this stitch. There's my knot coming through, I'll pull it right through. And crochet the next one loosely to try and get it on the out inside. No, it's on the outside. So what I'll do is I juggle how tight I have crocheted the last few stitches so that that, um, that knot will be on the inside of the stitch. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll just go a little bit looser than I was. And it should now be on the inside of my stitch. Just get it through there. It's getting caught on the lower stitch. And I'll pull the whole tail through. You can probably see it coming through there. There it is. And you can see that the knot is on the inside of my stitch. So this was an increase as well. We can't forget that. Now I won't do anything with the tail for the first stitch. One, two, and this time I'm going to anchor it inside my stitch. So I'm crocheting over top of both it and the stitches that I'm working on. So there's one, two, and here is stitch number three, which is an increase. So I'll increase in there, remembering I'm putting this tail in with every stitch. Don't pull it tight, just let it glide through naturally. So one, two, and on the next increase, I will open that tail and crochet inside there so that it, it's truly anchored now to my crocheting. So can you see there? It's anchored inside. I will crochet through that, through the stitch, and it shouldn't be going anywhere. I'll anchor it again with that increased stitch. And you shouldn't have any tails working themselves out later and you don't have to sew it in because it's already crocheted in. So we need to do one, two, and then an increase. So just keep doing an increase on the third stitch your whole way around and I'll meet you at the other end. So that's the end of row eight. Now before you go on to row nine, it's a good idea to get whatever you're crocheting around and because this has two flatter surfaces and a rounder surface, it's going to naturally land this way. I'm going to twist it on its side and check and see how I'm going for shape. I think this shape is doing very well. Of course, it needs to be bigger to fit around the ball, but it's starting to curve just a tiny bit, but it's, it's flat enough to, to keep in line with the ball so far. For row nine, we won't do any increases, so it'll just be a single crochet in each stitch the whole way round. For row 10, we're going to increase every fourth stitch. This time, try and place your increase between the increases two rows ago. My increase will be about here. That's two stitches ahead, so there's a single crochet, a single crochet, and then an increase of two single crochets in the next space. So remember, we're increasing on every fourth stitch. It's a good idea to start checking your work up against the ball now. Mine is fitting very well now, so for the next round, I'm not going to increase any stitches at all. So that was row 11 with no increases. I'll check against my ball again and see how it's shaping. Hmm. That's looking perfect. So for row 12, I'll also do no increases. So only a single crochet in each stitch for row 12. This is row 13. In row 13, we're going to increase every fifth stitch, but we're also going to add the legs. Now remember that you're going to do your increases roughly halfway between the last two increases. So the previous um, row was there, there were two rows of no increases. So here are my re increases from before. So I'll put my increase roughly here. So I will 
single crochet the first three but check on your work and see where um, where the increases previously were and make sure you do your increase roughly halfway between them both. I want the increase line to be in the centre back of my work. It really doesn't matter but it's just something I like to do. So I'll attach the legs to the opposite sides. So there'll be one here and one there and that will be the centre back. So there's the point I want to attach my legs. I'll count forward and see where I need to attach them and that just happens to be on an increase. We're going to increase every fifth stitch in this round. So I'll crochet single stitches up to there and attach the leg in that first increase. It doesn't really matter which way you put the legs, they'll probably twist anyway. With these toe pads, I've noticed that they always twist. It's probably just the way that I crochet. I tend to crochet my chains a little too tight. You may not find that, but I actually think it's a little cute to have that twist in there. Um, it wasn't intentional, that's just the way it turned out. When you attach your legs, I would like to attach mine so that... Um, the neater side, the top side, if you'd like to call it that, of the toe pads is facing up. I am assuming that when I put um, this leg on like, like this, that this will be the top side. Um, it has worked out that way previously with the frogs that I've made, so hopefully it won't twist in a funny way. Now remember I was on my increase, so I'm going to increase in that first stitch. I've gone through the top of the leg. Now I divide the leg into three parts, the top, the middle and the bottom there, so it will be attached with three stitches. So the next one is a single crochet and the last one is a single crochet with no increases. And I'll make sure that tail goes inside. And so we're up to one, two, three, four and then an increase. But remember how I hide my tails. You tie a knot in your tail, snip off here and then hide that portion in as you crochet. So when you get to the other side, if you fold your frog in half through the center, you can see it's starting to curve. You also don't fold to the top or bottom of the leg. So you're folding through the center of the leg, the center of your circle, over to the other side there you can roughly see that that's where I'm going to need to attach my leg. So I can see that I have one, two, three stitches here. It's going to be slightly to one side. Um, it doesn't matter. You can count all your stitches if you like. I'm going to put it in here now. So I'm, I've just finished my increase so I'll have one, two, three and attach the legs here. Now you'll go into the top of this stitch Make sure you get both the front and back loops or otherwise this can pull and make a um, make a hole looking there. So make sure you get both the top and bottom of that loop. Crochet into the next stitch. Then crochet through the middle of the leg into the next stitch. And crochet the last um, last hole on the leg into the next stitch and again hide your tail, your yarn tail and again you just make a little knot and crochet that in as you go so that you don't need to sew it in later. So we just finished row 13 and have added the legs. This is roughly the size that we need the body part to be. It will fit around the ball nicely now. Rows 14 to 20 will be no increases at all. So I've just finished row 20 of my frog body and because I'm using a lawn bowls ball and it's got markings on the outside I can see that I'm in the center of this ball. If you look on the reverse side I'm halfway through that side and halfway through this side. So for me, row 20 is going to be the center row. I'm not going to repeat row 20. I'm going to work from 19 backwards up this way. So that means that I need to do six rows of no increases. So we've just row, finished row 26. That's the end of the rows where we don't do any changes at all. As you can see, if we put the ball in here, that 
the the size looks a little large but as you decrease that'll be the perfect size to fit around your ball so for the next row row 27 we'll be decreasing every fifth stitch so to decrease what I do is I put my hook in the front of this stitch and the front of the next stitch and crochet them together then we'll crochet four stitches, just one stitch per space, three and four, and then we'll decrease again. So in the front of this stitch, in the front of the following stitch, and then crochet them together. We'll repeat that to the end of the row. We just finished row 27, where we reduced one stitch every fifth stitch. You can see how what looked like it was gaping before is now starting to shape very well. For rows 28 and 29 we won't decrease, we'll just do one single crochet in each stitch. We've just completed row 29, we'll test the ball into the body. It still slides in easily and there's plenty of space still to fit around the ball. It's going to get harder as we decrease. The next row is um, one decrease every fourth stitch, so it's going to get harder soon. I would test um, when you're halfway around and keep crocheting it not with the ball inside for as long as possible. Let's see how far we get. That's the end of row 30. We've decreased every fourth stitch. Now we'll check to make sure our heavy ball still fits inside. It would be terrible to crochet the next two rows and not be able to fit it. It's a squeeze, but it still fits. The next row, row 31, we won't decrease anything, so we'll just do a single crochet in each space. We just finished row 31. Now this is the last time we'll put the ball in because it's going to be a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> quite a squeeze. From now on we're going to need to crochet with the ball inside our work. This is row 32 and for this row we're going to decrease once every fourth stitch. I'm going to start with a decrease because of where the decrease was a few rows ago. So I'll do a decrease, then three stitches with one single crochet in each stitch, and then the next decrease. Be careful of your tension and make sure you don't let your loops get too big with the ball in the way. You don't want any gaping holes there. So just be careful as you go around and decrease once every fourth stitch. If you do design your own patterns and you're crocheting around something really hard like this ball and you find that it's too tight, what you can do is undo back to where you started your decreases and just do one more row in the centre. Mine, I'd rather keep it the way that it is, otherwise it's going to be too loose. This is, this is just working out fine. The next row is row 33 and row 33 has no decreases, so just one stitch in each space. There's not much left to go now. We're up to row 34 and we'll decrease every second stitch. For row 35, there are no decreases, so just put one single crochet in each space. For the next three rows, rows 36 to 38, we will decrease every second stitch. To end, we're going to sew the last round. So we're going to put one stitch in the front of each loop. So go all the way around putting one stitch in the front of each loop and then we'll pull it tight and tie it off. Make sure you tie it off really securely because you don't want this part coming undone. So I go in several times and I'm really careful about making sure that it's really, really tightly sewn in. Now that we've finished the body, it's time to start the frog head. We start with a magic ring and cast on seven. So 
Make an anchoring stitch and then do seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pull the tail gently and then we'll pull it tight in a minute. Put your yarn through the first single crochet. And then pull it tight. It makes it easier to crochet into the first stitch then. So that should be nice and closed and tight so you shouldn't be able to see any gap in there. And then we do an increase in the stitch that you just crocheted into. So the first stitch has two. And then we'll increase every second stitch. Remember to hide your tail in as you crochet. So the second stitch has one. The third stitch has two and we're hiding the tail in there so we don't have to sew in any ends at the end. So we've just finished row two. Now we'll increase every third stitch. So there was an increase here, there's one, two, and then increase on the third stitch. Make sure you avoid increasing into a previous increase or your work won't be round, it'll have edges. In my next stitch, I'll be able to anchor in that tail from the magic ring so that it won't come undone and so that I don't need to sew it in with a needle. In the fourth row we're going to increase in every second stitch. Make sure you avoid increasing in an increase from the previous row. The first five rows of the head are the same pattern as the body, but we need the head to be smaller than the body. For row six of the body, we increased every second stitch, but in the head, we're going to increase every third stitch. We're also going to try to avoid increasing immediately above a previous increase. So I'll start with an increase because that's between the previous increases. And we'll increase every third stitch. So a single crochet, single crochet, and then increase. Row 7 has no increases, so single crochet in each stitch to the end of the row. For the next row, row 8, we're going to increase every third stitch. Rows 9 and 10 will have no increase, so single crochet in each space for the next two rows. I'd like the frog's head to be just a tiny bit bigger. If we increase every fourth stitch or every sixth stitch, I think it's still going to be too big. So. This round, in round 11, I'll increase every eighth stitch. For the next three rows, there'll be no increases. There'll just be a single crochet in each space. So rows 12, 13 and 14, no increases. Row 15 of the head is the final row before we attach the mouth. And I'd like to get some of that shaping that you can see that we've done in the previous frogs. So I'll find the previous increases. They're there and there and I will decrease roughly halfway between them. So to do that, we'll go into the front of the next stitch and then the front of the stitch after that and crochet them together. So we're going to reduce every eighth stitch. So that means a single crochet in each stitch for the next seven stitches and then crochet the next two together. So you can probably see that there's a slight shaping happening there with, with the reduction of the every eighth stitch. Now the next row around, we're going to start attaching the mouth. So this is a personal preference, I know, but this is where our rows start in this line here. And I like to keep that pretty neatly at the back of my work. So if you fold it in half, you can find where center front would be. Then I get my mouth, fold it in half, and find where centre front will be for the mouth as well. So there's centre front. I align those two and then I guess I'm a bit rough after that. I just hold them there and I find out where I'll start crocheting my mouth on. For me, because I went forward a little, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six stitches and I'll start joining them. And now I'll start joining the mouth. So what I do is I poke the yarn through the next stitch. 
and I find the end of this row um, that I've sewn together through there and I'll crochet those both together. In the next one I'll also trap some of my um, yarn tails here if you can see them. I'll trap those yarn tails in what I'm sewing again so that I don't have to sew them later or because I hate doing that. Then we'll sew uh, crochet the next stitch. We're not increasing or decreasing, we're just doing one stitch in each space and trapping part of that tail as we go. That's probably enough to trap so I'm not going to worry about the yarn tails anymore. They can just be hidden inside there and I'll just do one um, one stitch in each space through both the head side and the mouth side. Be careful not to miss any stitches because you don't want any gaping holes but that's what it looks like on the inside and the outside. So just crochet a single crochet in each space to the other end of the mouth. So when you get to the other edge of the mouth you just fold it in half and crochet around the back. So just do a normal normal um, row around the back, not trapping anything. For row 17 we're going to crochet on the mouth bottom part. When you get to where the, the other part of the mouth was attached, crochet through that stitch and into the bottom um, into the bottom corner of the bottom section of the mouth. I don't know how to explain that very well, sorry. And then we do a single crochet into each space around the bottom of the mouth. When you get to the other edge of the mouth, go through the stitch that secured the top of the mouth and the last stitch on the bottom of the mouth. Continue crocheting until the end of the row. So once you get to where the next row begins, start reducing, reduce the sixth stitch. It's better if you can align it with the corner of the mouth. So I would like the corner of the mouth to be joined together. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, and that'll be the sixth stitch there. So I'll stitch two here and then join, uh, reduce. And I'll make my reduction coincide with the corner of the mouth. In order to coincide with the corner of the mouth on the other side, I'm going to reduce every seventh stitch just across the front of the mouth. And now I'm going to reduce on the seventh stitch. And I'll check again, one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth stitch will be on the corner. Because I had to do every seventh stitch over here, I'm going to keep going with every sixth stitch in the next round. And the sixth stitch is still away from the corner of the mouth where I did it that last round. And so I'll keep going every sixth stitch to the end of the row. For row 20, it's a single crochet in every space, but at the mouth corners, we'll reduce this one stitch. So here's where the mouth corner was reduced before. We'll reduce these ones here, immediately above them. So only reduce on the mouth corners and a single, um, a single crochet in each other space. For row 21, we're going to reduce every fifth stitch. I'll avoid where I've reduced one immediately in the row before. So I'll do my reduction here in the next two stitches. So in the front of this one, in the front of the next one. So I'll decrease there and then 
It's the fifth stitch. Our space is getting much smaller, so it's probably a good time now to start stuffing the top part of the head. For stuffing, I usually just buy a pillow when it's on sale and then use the stuffing. Little toys like this don't use a lot of stuffing, so one pillow goes a long way. When you're stuffing, make sure you reach up right up inside the head and don't leave any gaps, especially around the jawline um, and the top of the head. I stuff it quite firmly because it's going to squash a little over time. So just stuff it as carefully as you can, just the top part. That feels like um, a nice amount in there now. The head shape's looking lovely. So now we'll keep crocheting down the bottom, um, down towards the neck, and we'll fill this with stuffing in another two or three rows time. For row 23, we're going to reduce every third stitch. So I'm going to start my first reduction right here where the new row starts, and then reduce every third stitch to the end of the row. So row 24 is no change, just one single crochet in each stitch. For row 25, we'll decrease every second stitch. So crochet two together, and then do a single crochet in the next stitch. And repeat that to the end of the row. We need to stuff the bottom part of the head now. Fill it about the same texture as you've done for the top part, um, nice and firmly, making sure you fill in every gap. The frog's head's looking really good now. I love the shape. We're going to start on the neck now, and for the first two rows of the neck, we'll do a single crochet in each space. For the neck, every second row we're going to increase only on the side of the neck. So we'll do a single crochet across both the front and back, and then we'll do an increase on either side. So for row 3, we'll increase on the side, row 4, there'll be no increase, row 5, we'll increase on the sides, row 6, there'll be no increase, and then row 7, we'll attach the legs. In row 7 we're going to add the arms, so what we're going to do is where you need to add your increase we'll go to the right and left of that and stitch into those three stitches the arms and the increase. So you'll stitch into the top of the arm, last loop, and into your neck space, then you'll crochet into the space in the middle and into this, the space you need to increase in. You'll increase in that space as well. Then get the bottom stitch of the arm. Get the next stitch in the neck. Make sure you get the tail inside and crochet that down. So there will be your arms. You attach the second arm the same way on the other side. So the neck, now we're going to increase a little as we go down. We increased at either side as we attached the legs. So in the next row, there will be no increase. And every second row will increase just in the sides. We'll also tie a knot in those loose ends from the legs and crochet that in so we don't have to worry about it poking out or trying to sew it in later. So each second row there will be no increase and each other row will increase just on the sides. We'll do this right through until row 23. That's the neck finished. It's 23 rows long. It's about the same length as the pink frog's neck. We need it that long to be able to fit under the door. It's also a little wider, but that suits the larger ball as well. Because the ball has slightly flat sides, I've twisted the crocheting up a little bit so it's not exactly centre on the bottom. And so that the body, when I attach it, will reach down low enough to get under the door. When I joined the neck of the pink frog, I joined it in an arc at the bottom and a smaller arc that only just goes above the starting point at the top. So I'll do the same again on the frog 
that we're making today. So what that means is, I don't know if you can see, but I started about here and went down like this for the back of the neck. And for the top of the neck, I came across and just skimmed the top of our starting magic ring. That'll put the neck down lower so that it can slide under the door properly. So I'll sew the neck on now. When I sew the neck to the body, I sew up through one stitch, down through the next, up through one, down through the next, and I go around twice. That way each stitch is sewn down on both sides of the stitch. When you're finished, um, you need to tie it off very securely because children will definitely pick up your frog from the neck, so it needs to be as secure as possible. Make sure you align your legs in the right position. You don't want to find after you've finished sewing it on so carefully that you've misaligned your legs and they're sticking out a funny direction. From this angle you can see that the bottom arc is deeper than the top arc. That places it closer to the floor so that it can slide under the door more easily. So besides the eyes, the frog is done now. Um, and that's how much yarn was left from one each of these balls. In order to curl the tongue, what I did was I just rolled the tongue like this and just used the shape of the mouth to hold it shut. And then when I came back the next morning, the tongue was nice and curly at the end. Initially, I planned to put small eyes on the frog the same size as the eyes on the pink frog, but Considering the size of the frog's head and body, I thought, oh, maybe it would be cool to have larger eyes. So I made up a pair of larger eyes. I've included instructions for both of them at the start of this video. When I saw them on the frog itself, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. My family voted and we decided to sew on the larger eyes. So that's what you'll see at the end. To attach the eyes, make a roll of stuffing and put it in the eye and wrap it around the safety eye pin in the centre. Don't stuff it too tight, but again, you need it to be firm because with time it will get a little squished. Choose the location you want the eye to be on the head, press down firmly and tuck in the pieces of stuffing as you sew it on. Our squashed frog door stopper is finished. I love his large eyes. They're very cute. His tongue is starting to curl. His legs are bright and snappy colours. He's very heavy, so he's going to be an effective door stopper. If you make a frog door stopper, please share your pictures with me on Instagram or Pinterest. See you in the next tutorial.